Hey everybody, I'm Jackie. Welcome back. If you're just new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you. If you're not, I'm still glad to have you back. Um, I decided to do just a tag video today. I wanted to do something chill, really relaxed, nothing that involved a lot of thinking on my part. So um, I found this book tag called the Book Reader's Book Problem Tag and I found it on C.H. Bosky's channel. I don't think she created the tag. I'm not quite for sure who actually did, but I will link her down below. Um, she's a great booktuber. I really enjoy watching her videos and she, the books she reviews are definitely ones that are, um, they're not all the, they're not the books you normally see on YouTube. So I really like that, that she reviews different things, things that are very well known, but you don't see a lot on book two, if that makes any sense. But there are 11 questions, so let's just get started. First one, you have 20,000 books on your TBR. How in the world do you decide what to read next? Well, um, I like to theme my monthly TBRs. So example, next month, March is Women's History Month, Irish American Heritage Month. So my uh, TBR will focus a lot around women's history and Irish American along with Easter, because Easter's actually at the end of March this year. So I like to theme my TBRs based on what's going on in the month. But there are always two books that are predetermined, and that is my Public Library's Book Club Book of the Month, and then my TBR Jar Challenge, whatever book falls into that. If I can find a book that works within that kind of monthly theme, I go with that and still falls into that challenge. But if not, I just kind of go with what's going to work with the challenge. Two. You are halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? If you would have asked me this question in high school, I would have said I would have quit that thing and dropped it like a hot potato. I used to do that all the time with books and I really missed out on a lot of really good books that I had later since gone back and read and found out if I would have just given this the time that it actually took to enjoy the book, I would have loved it then too. So now I'm definitely of the camp that I try to finish the book. I will give it its fair shake. I try as hard as I can. Is it painful? Is it time consuming? Is it hard? Yeah, it is. There are books out there that I'm just like, I just want this thing to be over. So I will plow through it and do what I can, but there are times where you just, you just can't get through it. So, but I always want to try to give it its fair shake. I try to be the committed side of the fence, unless it's really something that I just, it's, it's not going to happen. It's just not. The end of the year is coming and you're so close, but you're so far away from your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up and how? Well, this is the first official year I've actually done a Goodreads reading challenge that I've actually posted on Goodreads. So beforehand, if I was close, I would try, but I didn't really go through with it because no one knew if I didn't make it or not. It was just my own little personal goal. Uh, this year, I'm on track as of right now. I like to keep it that way. So I really hope it doesn't come down to the point where like you're 20 books behind and you have a month. You know, I really hope it doesn't get to that. But if it does, I will probably be in the camp of trying, but I probably know I won't make it. So I, I'll just get over it that I'm not going to make it and just try harder next time. So the covers of series you love do not match. How do you cope? I don't. I just don't. It annoys the crap out of me and it will always annoy the crap out of me. I don't understand why publishers need to do that. I don't get it. I know a lot of authors don't have say what their covers look like, but still, I don't understand the thought process behind this. You're in the middle of a series, so you change the way the covers look and they're already really good books. They're already selling. What is your problem? Why do you need to change it? Because you think it'll open up to a more diverse audience or something? Stop. Just stop with the, the changing of covers. It's just annoying. It is. I have one series by Laurel K. Hamilton, and this is like a 25 book series, and there are literally four or five different covers, and they change like every five books, and it's just irritating as all get out. I just, I don't handle it. I don't cope with it, but you know what? If that's the only cover I can get in the book, I guess I'm buying it. Yeah. Everyone and their mother loves a book you really don't like. 
who do you bond with over your shared feelings? Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't try to look for someone that I can bond with and understand understands why I don't like the book. I, if you ask my opinion, I'm just say I don't like the book. I will defend my opinion and I will stand up for my opinion and my views. But if everybody else loves the book and I don't, well then I don't love the book and they all love it. Good for you. See if you can change your mind. Change my mind. You know, I'll I'll listen to you and give you the respect that you deserve as because you're a human, but I still don't like the book. So I guess I'm just gonna bond with myself. You're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public. How do you deal? I cry. I don't hold back. If a book can make me cry, make me laugh, make me angry, make me scream out, I will do it. Now, if I'm in a library, I tend to be a little bit more quieter, but if I'm like sitting on a park bench or something like that, I will cry. There was times in high school that I would read books and they make me cry and I just start crying in study hall. People look at me like, what is she crying for? Cause my book's really sad. He didn't go with her. You know, it's, I, I would, I would get involved in it. I do the same thing in movies though. I cry at movies. I get mad at movies. I am that person in the theater that like, oh, don't go to the door. I'm, I'm not that annoying, but that is my, you hear me, not verbally, but in my own apartment, I scream at that television all the time. Me watching Downton Abbey, that is a soap opera in and of itself with how much shit I say that fucking television set. It's not even funny. I love that show. I really do love Downton Abbey and it, I do talk to it. I do. Especially when I'm binge watching the television series, that is the worst. But when it comes to books, I don't hide my feelings. I just go for it. I let it flow. Let the tears come. A sequel of a book you've loved just came out, but you've forgotten a lot from the previous novel. Will you reread the book, skip the sequel, try to find a synopsis on Goodreads? Um, I tend to just go for the sequel. I try to just usually go for it. I'm not a big fan of rereading books. Um, I know I have in the past, but I don't... If I like the book enough, I will remember it. I might like skim through it, but I'm not going to sit there like and reread the entire book. Some of the books I read are pretty hefty books, like the Outlander series. She comes out with a book like once every like four years. So, and those are huge books. They, they're not like, oh, I'm just gonna breeze through this. They're chunkers. So I'm not gonna sit there and read all of those again just to recash on the other one. So I, I'll either skim through the book or I remember enough of it to be able to deal with it and a lot of it will come back to me as I read. Like, oh, I remember this from this book. I remember this. I remember these people are. And if I honestly can't remember like a character, I will go back and look. I'll go on Goodreads, go to Wikipedia, just get a little brief synopsis of it, so. You do not want anyone to borrow your books. How do you politely tell them no when they ask? I just say no. I'm not really polite about it, I just say no. Most of my friends know not to ask me to borrow books because of all the rules that are implied with buying my book or borrowing my books. So they just don't ask me because I know me, I'm really bad about giving books back. I'm really bad about it. So I expect everybody else to be really bad about it. So I just don't. Ask me to borrow a book unless I can get a hold of you 24 seven and hound you like the Dickens. I don't let people borrow my books. I just recently let somebody borrow one of my books and I trust her very, very much. And I know she will take good care of it. So therefore I know that it is, it is in good hands, but most of the time I usually do say no, but I'll make an exception for her because she's one of my besties. And but I know where she lives and I know multiple ways of getting a hold of her. I'm not above stalking. Just saying. Uh, reading ADD, you picked up and put down five books in the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? This rarely ever happens to me. I will get in reading slumps where I just can't seem to find anything that draws my interest, but it's not because I've tried picking up and starting it and then putting it down. I, once I start a book, I go through to the end. Unless, like I previously said, I really, really just can't because I've given it a fair shot and I just can't do it. I do not read multiple books at one point in time. I not a huge fan of that. I um, 
I know some people can do it, but when I was in college, I had to do it and it, because it was a textbook, I did it, it was homework. But free reading, I don't feel like I'm giving the book its fair shot. It's the time it really takes to enjoy the book. If I'm reading other people's work, I just, I've, I feel like I'm not being fair to my books. <laughs> I know that sounds really bad, but it's like, I'm playing with this book right now. I'm not gonna take something off the shelf and just forget about this one. You know, it, it, it's weird. But when I am in a reading slump, I will either watch a video on YouTube, um, I'll go buy more books, or I will probably put in a television show like Downton Abbey, The L Word, Weeds, something I've seen a bajillion times over but I'm still really really interested in and I'll just sit there and watch and then eventually it kicks me out of it for some reason and I go back to reading or I just go to sleep that's another one I'll, I'll just go to sleep there are so many new books coming out that you're dying to read how many do you actually buy I'm really not big on release dates of books I don't really keep track of those I know it's kind of weird but I don't um, because I tend to buy a lot of older books. Like I find like, ooh, this looks good. Ooh, this looks good. Ooh, this looks good. And I pick it up and it's, you know, four or five years old or it's like a hundred years old. It's just kind of how I, how I do the things that I do. So when it comes to how much you actually buy, I've been known to buy six books in a sitting or like some of my hauls that I've gotten online, 35 books in a sitting depending on where I'm buying the books and what the cost of the books are, but there is pretty much a minimum of always three books. I don't think I can actually say in the last two years that I've actually gone and only bought one book. I don't think I can actually say that. So minimum of at least three. After you bought the new books, you can't wait to get to how long do they sit on your shelf before you get to them? It depends. Did I, it depends on if I bought the book because I wanted to read it next month for like, I bought some books this month because I wanted to read them for Women's History Month. So they're not gonna sit on my shelf very long. It really depends on what my intention of buying the book was behind. If I was, I tend to read the books that I buy that I go searching for. If I'm searching for a certain type of book, I will read those first um, versus just, oh, this looks good. Or I've heard really good things about this book. I'll pick it up. Those ten are the, those are the ones that tend to be on my shelves far longer than the ones I'm like I have heard amazing things about this book I am looking for this book and I want to read this book so it it varies on the intention behind the book of why I bought it but that is those are all the eleven questions for the book reader problems tag. Again, I will link C.H. Bosky's video of this down below. Um, and feel free to do the tag yourself. I would love to see it and know what your bookish reader problem answer to these questions are. And next month is Women's History Month, so I will be having my March TBR very soon as well as my February wrap-up. And I do have one more review to go up, um, so you'll be seeing that very, very shortly. But until then, in happy reading and have a good one. Love you guys.